Hello viewers, welcome to Runa, taking you through the story of A-Level Applied Mathematics. And this video, I'm going to go through the marking guide for Senior 6, Mock Set 1 of 2022 for one of the schools I happen to be a teacher. So this video is suitable for students in both Senior 5 and Senior 6 offering principal mathematics as part of their combination. So the paper consists of two sections, Section A and Section B, so we shall start with Section A. Question 1 says, a stone is thrown vertically, upwards, with a velocity of 21 meters per second. Calculate part A, the maximum height attained by the stone, and part B, the time the stone takes to reach the maximum height. So what we know is that at maximum height, velocity is zero. Therefore, we shall come and use the third equation of motion and substitute for final velocity, initial velocity, and g which is a constant and when velocity is zero displacement is maximum height so when you simplify and make h the subject h will be equal to 22.5 meters which is the maximum height so most students after getting 22.5 they forget to put the si unit that is not okay for so for mechanics units are very very vital then part B is the time taken to reach maximum height. So still we shall use first equation of motion. Final velocity is 0. Initial is 21. G is a constant. So simplify and make T the subject. And that's what they wanted. Then question 2 says, two events A and B are such that probit of A given B is equal to 2 over 5. Probit of B is 1 over 4. And probit of A is 1 over 5. Find part A probit of A intersection B, and part B, probit of A union B. So yeah, first of all, from this conditional probability, we, uh, we can get the probit of A intersection B as probit of B multiplied by probit of A given B. So what to put here depends on what is here after the slash. After the slash, they use B, meaning here should be probit of B. If you put probit of A here, it will not be okay. So what you should remember is that what to put here must be similar to what is after the slash. So probit of B is a quarter. Probit of A given B is 2 over 5, which gives you 1 over 10. That is A intersection B. Then for part B, probit of A union B, we shall use the universal rule. Probit of A union B is equal to probit of A plus probit of B minus probit of A intersection B. The good thing, all these ones, we have them, so we shall substitute and get the final answer, and that's what they wanted. Then question 3 says, the table below shows how T varies with S. Use linear interpolation, stroke extrapolation, to estimate the value of T when S is 26 and S when T is 3.4. So shall first get the value of t when s is 26. So here we shall first extract out the values we want. So 26 is between 30 and 20 and that is why we are putting it in between there. So the value of t is what they want us to get. That we shall, we shall say t minus negative 29 to negative 2.9 divided by 0. Point, negative 0. 0.1 minus negative 2.9 i think you realize the order it is in that direction this and that is this the same applies for s so 26 minus 30 in the same order as before divided by 20 minus 30 the same order as before. So what I extract enough that the only step left is to look for a way of making t the subject. So you simplify and make t the subject and that's what they wanted. What about when t is 3.4? So when it is 3.4, it will be outside because it is beyond 3.1. So to be outside, that is called 
extrapolation. So still we shall use the same order. S minus 9 in that arrow divided by 12 minus 9. It will be equal to 3.4 minus 3.1 in that order as before. Di divided by 2.9 minus 3.1. So when that line is done, the only unknown is now S. So we shall look for way of making S the subject. So simplify and make S the subject. S will be 4.5 and that's what they wanted. Then question 4 says, a body of mass 4 kilograms is initially at rest at the origin. A constant force F, which is 8i 4j Newton, acts on the body, causing it to move. The body passes through a point P after 4 seconds. Find part A, the acceleration of the body, and part B, the velocity of the body as it passes through P. So here the force is a constant. Therefore, we cannot use calculus. Most students think they will use calculus, but we can't use calculus. We use the equations of motion, linear motion. So first of all, F is equal to MA, and that helps us to get the acceleration. So substitute for F, substitute for M, then get acceleration. Remember, acceleration is a vector quantity, so you leave it in this form, vector form. Most students think they will get the magnitude of acceleration. That is not okay unless the question specifies that find the magnitude of the acceleration. But if it doesn't, you should remember that if acceleration is a vector quantity and therefore the answer must be in vector form. There is part A. What about part B? So part B, first of all, acceleration is constant, meaning we use equations of motion to get our velocity. So V is equal to U plus AT. Come and substitute for U, which is 0, 0. Now, this 0, 0 must be seen. Most students have a tendency of just putting 1, 0. That is not okay. If you put 1, 0, it means it is a scalar. But here, velocity is a vector quantity. So, you should put 0i, zero 0j. Zero then, acceleration is that, and time is that. Then simplify and that will be the answer. Remember, velocity is a vector quantity, so we must leave it in vector form. So you should also remember that this one must be in vector form. If not, then max will be lost. Question 5 says, the price index of an article in 2000 based on 1998 was 130. The price index of an article in 2005, based on 2000, was 80. Calculate Roman 1. The price index of an article in 25, based on 1998. And Roman 2. The price of the article in 1998, if the article was 45,000 shillings in 2005. Now, Price index has two formulas. There is the one which is just a ratio. For example, here, 2000 using 1998. So we can use P2000 over P1998. That is also okay. But when you look at this price index, it is in a hundreds. Meaning that it was already multiplied. To get it, they already multiplied by a hundred. Therefore, there are two options. You can either give it in this. If it was just a ratio, it would have been 1.3. And yet, it would have been 0 0.8. But now it is 130 and this is 180. Meaning it was to get this 130, they had already multiplied by a hundred. And also to get this 80, they had already multiplied by a hundred. So most students forget, forgot to multiply by 100 and lost marks, got a very big value. So you should remember that this 130 is equal to P2000 over P 1998 multiplied by 100. That's when you can get the 130. 
Then from there you can get make P99 the subject and to be to bring it this side and take this one this side to give you P2000 over 1.3. What about this one? P25 over P2000 times 100 is equal to 80. Therefore, P25 is equal to 0 0.8 times P2000. Then the question said, find the price index of the article in 2000 based on 1998. So they want P2005 over P1998 multiplied by 100 substitute. So when I substitute, this P2005 is this. Then divided by P1998, which is this. So it would have been division, but because this is a multiplication sign, it means you must get the reciprocal of this. That is why you see 1.3 over P2000. Then this 100 is here. After that, you realize that this cancels. And when you apply this times this times this, gives you 105. And that's what they wanted. Then part B, they want the price of the article in 1998 if the article was this in 2000. The good thing we have got this I2005 in 2005. So the good thing we have got this I2005, that we can shall just come and substitute. Where there is this, we shall put there 104. Where there is this, we shall put there 45,000. And this is what they want. So make it the subject and that will be the answer they wanted. Then question C says, the continuous random variable X has a PDF FX as shown in the diagram. Find part A, the value of K, and part B, the probability of X greater than 2.1 but less than 3.4. So this is a uniform distribution. If you say straight line, it means it's a uniform distribution. The for total area will be equal to 1. Total area is the total probability and to be equal to 1. So from here up to here, it is k minus 1 because there is this 1 which is not part of the triangle. So that is length which is k minus 1 and width is a quarter from here up to here. Therefore, length times width is equal to 1. Therefore, look forward making k the subject and that will be the answer they wanted in part A. Then for part B, they want the probability from 2.1 up to 3.4. Remember, this is the continuous random variable, meaning this, whether they say greater than or they say greater than or equal to, they mean the same thing, unlike for discrete. So from 2.1, 2.1 up to 3. Point four. What will be the length? The length will be 3.4 minus 2.1. That is why you are seeing this here. And the width will still be maintained. A quarter. That's why you say a quarter here. So when I simplify, that will be the answer they wanted. Then question 7 says, In an equilateral triangle, pitch R. Three forces of magnitude, these ones, act along the sides, these ones, respectively. Their forces are in the order of the letters. Note this word. Their forces are in the order of the letters. We shall see that, what that means. Find the magnitude of the resultant. So we shall need to make a sketch of P to R. So labeling is done anti-clockwise. I think you see... P to R. So labeling must be done anti-clockwise. Then they said it is an equatorial triangle, meaning that each vertex has an angle of 60 degrees. Then we shall start labeling. This 5 corresponds to P2. So in the direction P2, that's where 5 will be. Therefore, we shall come and put there 5. Then 10 corresponds to 2R. So 2R, that's where the 10 will be. So we shall come and put there our 2R. 
then 8 corresponds to PR PR so shall come and substitute our PR okay then next they said find the magnitude of the resultant so that means that we have to resolve so let F be the resultant force and when I resolve when I resolve this one it is entirely horizontal so that's why you see a 5 0 then this 10 the horizontal it goes to the left meaning to be negative so to be 10 cos 60 but negative the vertical goes upwards so it will be positive that's why you see positive 10 sin 60 then for 8 the horizontal goes to the right meaning it is positive that's why you see 8 cos 60 then the vertical goes upwards meaning it is also positive that's why you see 8 sin 60 after resolving, we have to use a calculator to add. So add this plus this plus this to give you 4. Then also this plus this plus this to give you this to 4 decimal places. But the question asks for magnitude. Therefore, we have to come and get the magnitude of the resultant force, which will be 16.0935. Now, some students went further ahead to get the direction, but the equation did not ask for direction. It only asks for magnitude. So the question is, when do you get direction? You get direction when they just say, find the resultant force. When they just say, find the resultant force, it means you must get magnitude and direction. And the reason is because force is a vector quantity. But when they specify, find the magnitude, it means you only stop at the magnitude. Then question 8 says, a biased coin is such that a head is three times as likely to occur as a tail. The coin is tossed five times. So when you see this number of times, repeated trials, it means it is a binomial distribution. Find the probability that at most two tails occur. First, we have to get the probability of success and the probability of failure. So let t, let small t be the probability of getting a tail, and ph be the probability of getting a head. Remember, they said ph is three times as likely to occur as a tail. So if the probability of getting a tail is a is t, then the probability of getting a head is three t. That's why you see here three t. But total probability is equal to one. Therefore, t is equal to a quarter. That means that our probability of success, how do you get the probability of success? It's got from the question. The question says, find the probability that at most two tails. That means that probability of getting a tail is the probability of success. And the other probability of getting a head will be the probability of fail. Okay. So, and the number of times or number of trials is 5, and that is n. Then they want the probability of at most. At most means don't exceed that. So the probability will be probability of x less than or equal to 2. And when you start writing down your probability, so expanding this, you must start from x equal to 0. Most students, what they do, they ignore this x equal to 0, and they start from x equal to 1 plus x equal to 2. That is not okay. So you must start from x equal to 0. Then from there, remember that n is this and p is this. So you can use your binomial distribution table. If I come to this table, how is it used? First of all, you must realize that the table you use must have the word individual terms. Because there are two tables, there is discrete and there is cumulative. We shall see how both are used. But now the only one has the must have the word individual terms in your logbook. So look for the value of n, it is 5. Look for the value of p, it is 2.5. Then get the corresponding probabilities. Probability of x equal to 0 will be 0 0.2373. Probability of x equal to 1 will be 0 0.3955. And probability of x equal to 2 will be 0 0.2637. So I'm going to add all those ones.
When we do that, we shall come up with this step. And when we add, we shall come up with 0 0.8965. Now that is one method when you are using individual or discrete probabilities. What if I want to use cumulative table? So there, when, if I'm using a cumulative table, I will first make it in the form of greater than or equal to. Because if you look at this table of cumulative, the sign here is I greater than or equal to R. That means that inequality must be in the form greater than. But this one is less than or equal to, meaning it cannot work. So you have to first change it by getting the complement. So it will be equal to 1 minus the complement, which is x greater than or equal to 3. Now, this probability of x greater than or equal to 3 is the one which can be got from this table. So I'll come and look for n equal to 5, look for r equal to 3, and look for p equal to 0 0.25. Then the value will be 0 0.1035. And that's what we shall right here. I think I see 0 0.13, so 0 0.1035. And when I subtract, I'll come up with this, which is the same as before. So any of the two methods is okay. So that was section A. Now we shall go to section B. Section B, question 9 says, the distribution function of a continuous random variable is as follows. This is it. So it is cumulative. Find Roman 1, the values of beta and lambda, Roman 2, the PDF of x, and Roman 3, the mean of the distribution. So here, as if it is capital F of x, it, mean, it means that when I substitute 1 in this, and I also substitute 1 in this, I'll get the same value. Similarly, when I substitute by t, it is, there is no constant here, so we just ignore that. Then we go to 3. When I substitute 3 in this, and also I substitute 3 in this, I have to get the same value. Also, when I substitute 7 in this, and 7 here, I'll have to get the same value. So there we shall get two equations with two unknowns. So let's first do that and we see. So F3 substituting the second one and third one, you come up with that. Then simplify to get an equation. That will be equation 1. What about F7? F7 is still the same case. Simplify and get an equation. So those are two equations, two unknowns. We have to solve them simultaneously. So equation one, two minus equation one will give us. So this seven beta minus three beta gives you four beta. Lambda minus lambda cancels. Seventy-three minus seventeen gives you fifty-six. Then when I divide, I'll come up with beta equal to fourteen. After getting beta, I can use either equation 1 or equation 2. So when I use equation 1 and I substitute for beta, I'll come up with lambda as negative 25. So after getting beta and lambda, I can rewrite my capital F of x. And that is capital F of x. So basically that's what they wanted in Roman 1. Then Roman 2... They want the PDF. So PDF will be good by differentiating. So from capital F to small f, you differentiate. So I'm going to differentiate all these terms. So DDX of that, give the, when I differentiate this, I come up with this. Then differentiate this, I'll come up with this. Differentiate 1, I'll come up with 0. Therefore, I can write my small f of x. And that's what they wanted. Then for Roman 3, Roman 3, they wanted the expectation or the mean. 
So expectation is integral of x fx. So come and substitute from 1 to 3 and from 3 to 7. Then when I integrate, I'll come up with this. Substitute the limits, you come up with that step. And simplify to get the final answer they wanted. And that would be the answer they wanted. Then question 10 says, given that capital M is this, write down part A, write down the possible error in each of the values above and from part B estimate the range of values within which M lies and part C estimate the maximum percentage error in M so writing down the trick you should know is that the number of decimal places is the number of zeros for example this one has two decimal places meaning it would be 0 0.005 there are two zeros then the second one has three decimal places, so it will be 0 0.000, then 5. There are three zeros, because there are three decimal places. This one has two, so it will be 0 0.005. This one has four decimal places, so it will be 0 0.00005. So there are four zeros, because there are four decimal places. So the number of decimal places is what helps you to identify the number of zeros to write. Then part B, estimate the range of values within which M lies. So here it means you have to get the maximum value and also the minimum value of M. Let's begin with the minimum value. So for this one, the whole of this to be minimum, the numerator must be minimum and the denominator must be max. Maximum. So, to get a minimum, to get this minimum of addition, it means that this one has to be minimum and this one has to be minimum. But for the, for the denominator, to get the maximum of subtraction, the first one has to be maximum, but the second one should be minimum. Then you can get, use the calculator to get the answer that you wanted. So they did not specify the number of decimal places, therefore it is advisable to use 6 when they don't specify. That was minimum. What about maximum? Maximum means this, the numerator is maximum, denominator is minimum. So for maximum numerator or maximum addition, this should be maximum and this should also be maximum. Then for minimum subtraction, this should be minimum, but this is maximum. So we already covered errors in this plat on this platform. If you're having challenges, you can it's advisable to first go through the video for errors. The next is to simplify and get the minimum value. After that, you can state the range. So the range, what you should note here is that I'm using a box bracket. And I'm starting with the minimum value followed by with a comma, then maximum value. So that is how they state the range in errors. Then part C, part C says estimate the maximum percentage error in M. So maximum percentage error will be relative error multiplied by 100. And how do we get relative error? So to get relative error, we're going to first get working value. Working value means this very value given in the question. So the value of M without alter altering anything is the working value. So you come and use your calculator and work it out. Then the maximum absolute error will be maximum value minus minimum value divided by 2. But what you should note is that I'm putting there two bars to mean magnitude. I'm putting a magnitude sign. So the magnitude sign must be seen for this word up because of this word absolute. 
and that will be the answer, the answer of absolute error. But that is not what they asked. They asked for percentage error. So percentage error is relative error multiplied by 100. And how do you get relative error? Relative error is absolute error over working value. So absolute error over working value is equal to, sorry, multiplied by 100 will give you the percentage error. So what you should note is that here I used a magnitude sign. You should never forget that. And that's what they wanted. So that was question 10. Now we shall go to question 11. Question 11 says, A particle of mass 3 kilograms is acted upon by a force of this at a time t. At t equal to 0, the particle is at the position vector this, and this velocity is this. Determine Roman 1, part A, the position vector of the particle at t equal to 1 second, and part B, the distance of the particle from the origin at t equal to 1. So what you should realize here is that in this force, there is a variable t, meaning this force is variable. So it is it varies with time. It keeps on changing with time. Because it keeps on changing with time, what should come in your mind is that we are going to use calculus. And that is that means integration and differentiation. Okay, so we shall come and see that. First of all, this is what is given. M is that. F is that. And initial position vector is that. Initial velocity is that. Therefore, acceleration will be... Remember, F is equal to MA. Therefore, acceleration will be F over M. So, M is this. And F is this. This, And when you multiply the two, you come up with this. So, that is acceleration. And to get velocity, because the, it is variable... We shall have to use calculus, so we shall integrate. When I integrate acceleration with respect to t, I get velocity. So integrate this 2 gives you 2t, integrate this gives you this, integrate this gives you that. Don't forget the constant of integration. Then when t is equal to 0, v is equal to the initial velocity, which is 330. Therefore, come and substitute where there is t, you put there 0. That means that the whole of this will become 0. That's why you see here 0. And where there is c, it's still c. And where there is v, we shall put there this. That means that c is equal to 330. Therefore, you will come here and substitute for c to give you v as this. Then add the 2, this plus this gives this. This plus this gives this, and this plus this gives that. After getting velocity in terms of t, we shall also get displacement. So to get displacement, we integrate velocity. So integrate this to give you this, this to give you this, this to give you this. Don't forget the constant of integration. Then when t is 0, initial position vector is 1, negative 5, negative 1. So you shall come and substitute t equal to 0 and s equal to that to give you c as this. Therefore, you shall come and rewrite your s as this and add this plus this to give you this, this plus this to give you this, and this plus this to give you that. So when t is equal to 1, come and substitute for t to get the position vector they wanted. And part B, the distance from the origin, will be the magnitude of that position vector. Then question 12 says, The table below shows scores by 10 students A to J in physics and mathematics tests. Plot a scatter diagram for the given data. Comment on the relationship between the scores in physics and math tests. Then draw a line of best fit on the scatter diagram. Then estimate the scores in math for a student who scored 37 in physics. Then calculate 
the rank correlation coefficient for the data and comment on your result. So before anything, we have to tabulate. So students, we shall put what was given A up to J. Then for X, we shall put those scores. We are, we are putting the scores for math. Then for Y, we shall put the scores for physics. So you have to add the total because you're going to draw a line of best fit some, somewhere. Then for Y, we shall put also those scores. And you also get the total. Now next is to rank. So ranking is done in descending order. The largest value is given the smallest rank. So here in X, we shall look for the largest. Largest is 40, so it will take rank 1. The next is 36, it will take rank 2. Next is 33, it takes rank 3. Next is 31, it takes rank 4. Next is 29, it takes rank 5. Next is 28. Now when you look at 28, there are two values. What do you do? What, what you do, you first get the would-be position. We have stopped at 5, so there would be one would have taken 6, another would have taken 7. But the rule says they must get the same rank. So what you do, you are going to get the average of these two. So the average will be 6.5. So that means that you will come here and put 6.5 here and also 6.5 there. Now you have already taken position 7, so next will be 8. So this one will take 8. And next will be this, it will take 9. And lastly is this to take 10. So you have ranked x values. Next is to rank y values. So still the largest is 40, give it rank 1. Followed by 35, they are 2, so one would have taken 2, another would have taken 3, but they have to get the same value, so you get the average. Average is 2.5. So you shall give this one 2.5, and this one 2.5. So we have taken position 3, next is 4. So this will take 4. And next is this, it will take 5. Next is this, it will take 6. Next is this, it will take 7. Next is this, it will take 8. Next is this, it will take 9. And lastly is this, it will take 10. So I finished ranking, next is to get the difference. So this values, this minus this gives you that, this minus this, 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 and this minus this. But our interest is the square of the difference. So if you get a column of the square of the difference, this squared, this squared, square this, 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 square this. And next is to get the total of all these values. So when you add all of them, the total will be 10. Okay, so after tabulating, we can now go and draw our start answering the questions. So the first one was plotting a scatter diagram and commenting on the result. Scatter diagram, you need a graph paper. So come and get a graph paper, draw the axis, horizontal and vertical. Then get a suitable scale for the horizontal.
and also stable scale for the vertical. So next is to plot, to plot we need the values of x and values of y. So 28, 30, so look for 28 here and 30 here and locate that point. The next is 20, 20 which is here. Next is 40, 40 which is here. Next is 28, 28, which is here. Next is 21, 22, which is here. Next is 31, 35, 36, 35, 29, 27, 33, 31, and lastly 24, 23. So I finished drawing our scatter diagram. And they want us to comment. So comment is that there is a positive linear relationship. So we, most students use the word correlation here, but that is not okay. It is not positive correlation. It is positive linear relationship. So the word relationship has to be seen, not correlation. If you say positive correlation, it's not okay. Okay, so that is Roman 1. Let's go to Roman 2. Roman 2, they want you to draw a line of best fit for the scatter diagram. So for the line of best fit, you will need mean point mean point you have to get this mean of x and mean of y so mean of x is 29 mean of y is 29.1 therefore the mean point is 29 29.1 so after getting this mean point you have to locate it on the graph so it will be here after that you shall now draw the line of best fit Hello, hello, hello. So after calculating this mean point, you have to draw, to locate it on the graph. So you come and put it, it is there. The next is to draw the line of best fit. Now this line of best fit follows, through, follows some conditions. One, it must pass through the mean point. Two, it must pass through any other one or more points. And three, it must leave equal or almost equal points on either side. So let's first draw that line of best fit and we see what, I, what, it, what I'm meaning. So if you look at this line of best fit, the first thing we look at is, has it gone through the mean point? Yes, because it is, this is the mean point. The next thing is, has it gone through any one or more points, other points? So if you look at this line of best fit, it has gone through this, it has gone through this, it has gone through this. So that con condition number two is fulfilled. Then condition number three, has this left equal or almost equal points on either side? So if I, that means I'll come and count. This side there is one, two, and three. Okay, what about this side? So this side there is three. What about this side? One, two, three, Four. So this side it is 4. So that means it has left almost equal points on either side. So all equal points means if it leaves 3 here, it will also leave 3 here. That, those are equal points on either side. Almost equal points, it means it can leave 3 here and 4 this side. Or it leaves 4 this side and 3 this side. So the word almost equal means the difference must be 1. For example, here 4 minus 3 is 1. 4 minus 3 is 1 like that equal points means the difference is zero okay so that is the line of best fit and that was roman 2 
Then Roman 3 says, estimate the score of in math for a student who scored 37 in physics. So that means you will come here and locate first of all 37 in physics. Then take this side to meet the land of base feed, then drop to meet the horizontal axis. So let's do that. So that is easy actually. Then take it, drop it down to meet the one the horizontal axis. So you have to read off that value and that will be the score in math. So come and conclude that the score in math for a student who scored 37 in physics is 37. So that was Roman 3. Now we shall go to part B. So part B says, calculate the rank correlation coefficient for the data and comment on your result. So you shall come here, quote the formula for rank correlation coefficient, substitute for summation of d squared and the value of n. n means the number of pairs, which is this also. Then use a calculator to come up with that value. The next is to comment. Now to comment, you use this table. So the value is, first of all, n is 10. And to comment, to use either this or this. Now the calculated value is big at 5%. The calculated value is bigger than this, meaning it is significant. Because here they said significant if this exceeds. So the calculated value is bigger, so it's significant. Even here, it is bigger, so it is significant. Therefore, we shall come and say that the comment is significant at 5%. Or you can say significant at 1%. Now the challenge with most students, because they, can, they know both comments, they want to write both, they will say, Significant at 5% and 1%. That is not okay. You have to choose only one level of significance, not both. So for me, I'm giving them to you both because a student can choose to write this or choose to write this, but never write both. So that was question 12. Now we shall go to question 13. The table below shows an extract of the table of a set from a table of a certain function fx. Use linear interpolation to find this, 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 and that. So I will answer it one by one. So let's start with part A, f of 0 0.15. So the first thing to do is to extract out the values shall use. So this is the unknown which they want us to calculate. So shall use interpolation. This minus this, the order matters, divide by this minus this will be equal to this minus this, divide by this minus that. So they are why one is the only unknown. So look for a way of making it the subject and to be this. Therefore, shall conclude that f of 0 0.15 is that. That is Roman 1. What about Roman 2? Roman 2, they want f of 0 0.6. So in Roman 2, shall also come and draw a table which of values shall use. Now this is going to be extrapolation. So for extrapolation still, we shall say y2 minus 0 0.3894 divided by this minus that is equal to this minus this divided by this minus this. So there we have y2 as the only unknown. So make it the subject and use a calculator to get the answer they want. Therefore, conclude that f0.6 is that. That was Roman 2. What about Roman 3? Roman 3 is inverse of 0 0.35. Now, inverse of 0.35 means that 
for example, previously what was given was the values of x. But when they write this, it means this one is a value of fx. Okay. So we shall come here and still do the same extract out the table. Then use interpolation. So this minus this divided by this minus this is equal to this minus this divided by this minus that. The next is make x make x one the subject, and that would be the answer they want. Therefore, conclude that inverse of 0 0.35 is that. That was Roman three. What about Roman four? Roman for the one the inverse of zero. So when fx is zero. Then we shall come and extract out the values we shall use. And here we are going to use extrapolation. So this minus this over this minus this is equal to this minus this over this minus that and make x to the subject use a calculator to give you that therefore you conclude and that's what they wanted so question 14 says part a 3 4 says these ones act on a point act at a point this act at these points respectively show that these forces reduce to a couple so let's first begin with part A. So we have the force and the position vectors, or the coordinates. So for a couple, first of all, resultant force must be equal to zero. That is one condition. Another condition is that there must be a moment. So we get the moment will be coordinate or position vector cross force. So this is not multiplication, it is a cross. So this is the coordinate so if you look at this, so the coordinate is 2, 0, the force is this, coordinate is this, force is that, coordinate is this, force is that. So that is what we shall be using. So the first write coordinate followed by force, coordinate followed by force, coordinate followed by force. So crossing means you are getting the dominant, this product minus this product to give you this, this product minus this product to give you this, this product minus this product to give you this. When you add everything, you come up with negative 15 newton meter. Then you can conclude that since the resultant force is zero, but the resultant moment is not zero, then the force is reduced to a couple. So that was part A. Now part B. A, B, C, D is a rectangle. With A, B equal to 3 meters and angle C, A, B equal to 30 degrees. Forces of this act along these res sides respectively. Calculate the magnitude and the direction of the resultant force. Hence find where its line of action cuts a b so here we shall first illustrate with the diagram so you come and draw a rectangle then we shall put the forces so if you look at this This one corresponds with SC. So I put 10 newtons in the direction SC, then 20 newtons in the direction AD, and 20, 20 newtons in the direction DB. So let's do that. So I'll put SC 10, then 20 in AD and also 20 in DB. 
Okay. Now next is to resolve because the question the question if you look at the question it says catch the magnitude direction of the resultant force and let's find where the line of action cuts a b so let's first get the magnitude and direction of the resultant force that will be done by resolving so first of all bc we shall need bc somewhere when we take a moment so bc is equal to 3 tan 30 which is root 3 meters so let's store it there we shall use it after some time but for now let us first resolve so when I resolve I'll come up with this as the resultant force I think by now you know how to resolve so positive horizontal is this then positive vertical is upwards then result is from start to end then you can use Pythagoras theory to get the magnitude and also use Sokatoa to get the direction the next is to get the to get the hence part the hence part they said find where the line of action cuts a b so there you have to get the equation of the line of action so the equation of the line of action To get it, you need to first get the moment. So from this, we know that fx, summation of fx is that, summation of fy is that. That is okay, because we shall need them. Then you also need the moment, anti-clockwise moment. So how is it got? So we shall come here. If we go back to our diagram. I want to take moments about this. Now, what we should know that where the line, if the line of action passes through the pivot, then the moment is zero. So this force has zero moment because it passes through the pivot or the point where I take moments from. Also, this one has zero moment because it, its line of action passes through the pivot. So the moment we are going to get is the moment of this force. So it will be that force times the perpendicular distance. So if you are using this distance a b, if I'm using a b, it means that I'm going to say 20 times a b sine this angle, which is 30. Then if I want to use distance a d, I'll I'll use this angle. So to be 20 times this distance si times a d sine 60. So any of the two is okay. Any of the two is okay. But the good thing here, what I know, what I've got is distance BC, meaning I'm going to use a D, which is equal to BC. So here it is negative 20 times root 3 sine cos 30 so you can either use cos 30 or sine 60 and it's okay they give the same answer so why is it negative it is negative because it is it is in the clockwise direction if you look at this this force if i stand here this force here has an effect of in this form so which is clockwise clockwise means negative anti-clockwise means positive So after getting the moment, I can come and get the equation of the line of action. I have to state it, g minus x summation of fy plus y summation fx equal to 0. Then I substitute for g for summation of fy and summation of fx. So that becomes a Cartesian equation which is as x and y. Therefore, we come and conclude that at the point where the line of action cuts a b, 
y is equal to 0. It's like we are getting, remember this is a, b. So when it cuts, it means this value of y is 0. And we want to get the x-intercept. So when y is equal to 0, substitute for y equal to 0, the whole of these cancels, and therefore x will be in negative 2 meters. Therefore, we'll come and conclude that the line of action of the resultant cuts BA produced at a distance 2 meters from A. So that was question 14. Now we shall go to question 15. The diagram below shows masses A, B, and C of mass of masses this, this, and that kilograms, respectively connected by light strings, which pass over smooth pulleys X and Y. Mass B rests on a horizontal rough table. The coefficient of friction between the table and the mass B being 0.5. So it's a diagram. The system is released from rest. Part A. Determine, Roman 1, the acceleration of the masses, and Roman 2, the tension in the, in the strings. Part B. After mass C has dropped through a distance of 2 meters, the string connecting it to mass B snaps. Determine the time and velocity at which this occurs. So yeah, we need to redraw the diagram and we show the forces acting. So first we shall start with weight, act vertically downwards, and because this is downwards, this will be upward, and because this is upward, this will be downward, and because this is this side, this will be in that direction, and this will be in this direction. Okay, the next is this weight here, it is for G, and because of this weight, there will be a normal reaction, R. Then that is done. Now for this mass, there is this weight. There is that tension. It is different from this one because the masses are different. Then this is upward, this is downward, and this is there, and this is there. Then here, this is heavier than this. So if you want to see how it looks like, So this 6 kilogram mass is heavier than the 3 kilogram mass, therefore it, this one will move downward as you see it here, and this will move upward, and this will move to the right. Therefore when you are showing acceleration, this will be downward, then this will be upward, and this will be to the right. Then there will be friction because the surface was rough. So now for the 4 kilogram mass, we shall see that this minus these two is equal to ma, which is 4, which is 4a, as you can see it here. Then you can substitute for coefficient of friction, mass, because this r is mg, which is this. So 4 times g. Simplify to get equation 1. Then for the 3 kilogram mass, it will be this minus this equal to ma, which is 3a. To substitute for g and get equation 2. What about for the 6 kilogram mass? So still this minus this equal to ma. Substitute for g and get equation 3. Now we have three unknowns and three equations, so we shall solve simultaneously. So equation 2 plus equation 3 will give you that. And equation 1 plus equation 4 will give you that. And therefore, 
g acceleration now we have got as that then for Roman 2 we know that from equation 2 t is equal to this so we have to get the tensions also first tension is that and from equation 3 the second tension will be that then for part b we shall use the third equation of motion v will be equal to this square root of that we should substitute and get the velocity then the time use first equation of motion to get this and that's what they wanted so that brings us to the end of this video thank you for watching and next video will be for senior 5 and math 1 end of term 1 so if you're not yet subscribed please click on the subscribe button below this video so that i can see updates when the next video has been uploaded and also if you know any student who's not yet on this platform please share the link of this video with them via social media platforms like facebook and whatsapp so that you can all benefit of a family